Hey there, guys. All right, today we are back with some more overly sarcastic productions, and I think we would, thought we would take a little break from the fantasy author kind of reactions and go back to some history. This time, Blue's Dumb History Tales number two. Before we dive in, make sure you go and check out the links in the description box below. I'd love it if you joined the Discord and follow me over at Twitch. And please do go check out the gaming channel here on YouTube where I upload old streams and dumb clips. Yada yada, same shit I say every single fucking video. Uh, anyways, really got nothing else to add here at the beginning. I don't know what tales exactly he's going to be covering in this nine minute video. So... Let's just go ahead and dive straight into it. Earlier last year, I found myself with a surprise gap in my upload schedule, so I did what any self-respecting online content creator would do. I panicked, hastily cobbled together a glorified meme dump, and then watched in shock as it became one of my most popular videos of the year. I'd say the internet is a confounding mistress, but I know damn well that you're all just here for the memes, and I'm honestly an idiot for not realizing it sooner. So, I have scoured far and wide, but mostly the Mediterranean, to bring you four more of the finest in historical shit posts. I would I apologize for how safe I'm playing it by sticking to my usual historical stomping grounds, but I've been sick like all week and I am way too hopped up on cold meds to have any capacity for new research, self-awareness, or remorse. So let's mm. do some memes. Number four. History can be weird about people's bones. You'd think that people- Yeah. You know, you could really just leave it at that. People tend to sit still once they die, but sometimes corpses and bones become prolific travelers. Machiavelli is buried somewhere in this church, but we have no idea where. The body of Alexander the Great up and disappeared a couple centuries after he died, and Hernan Cortez was buried and exhumed nine times, buried across the Atlantic Ocean, and casually misplaced for a century. But one instance of bone shuffling... Casually misplaced his bones. That always amuses me is the story of Dante Alighieri. Dante had a complicated relationship with his hometown of Florence, being that he really liked it, but he just wished that it wasn't so full of assholes who exiled him. So after Dante died in the city of Ravenna, Florence realized that he was actually a pretty popular poet, so they asked for his body back in 1396 and again in 1429, but Ravenna said, buzz off, you exiled him, he's ours. Eventually, a Florentine from the Medici family... <coughs> Oh, I wasn't lying about being sick. <coughs> oh, God, that hurts. Mm. Mm. Oh, delicious tea. Jesus. Ah, okay. Eventually, a floor. I don't know why you just didn't cut that out. Florentine from the Medici family became Pope and organized, i.e. demanded, for Dante to be returned to Florence so Michelangelo could build a mausoleum for him. Ravenna's hands were tied because, you know, it's the Pope, so they agreed and gave Florence the casket. Now, it's not exactly polite to go throwing open the sealed sarcophagus of your beloved native poet, but some Florentines in the delegation to Ravenna were a little suspicious, so they casually yanked open the tomb to find... nothing. Whoops. Yeah, so... The Okay, but here's the thing. Let's say Ravenna had put bones in it. What is... Wh how would you know that they were Dante's bones, though? Like, Ravenna really could have just dug up any fucking bones and just put them in there and be like, yeah, that's totally Dante's. Totally. Right? Like, you know, just... Just saying. The Franciscan monks pulled a little sneaky on them by stealthing Dante's bones out of the sarcophagus and into a hiding spot in their monastery. But Florence was in the awkward position where they couldn't call out Ravenna for hoodwinking them without admitting to opening a sealed sarcophagus. So, Florence just called it a day, pretended like nothing happened, and went home. And <laughs> so lay the greatest poet in Italian history, packed up into a tiny box and hidden behind a wall like he was a secret stash of Christmas presents. Jeez, that's actually pretty morbid. Eventually, he did get moved into a shiny new mausoleum, but only some 300 years later. In the end, safe to say that Dante would have been all for Ravenna's reverse skeleton heist. It sure embarrassed the hell out of Florence, so I say mission accomplished. Yeah. Number three. Alexander the Rad was, by most accounts, pretty good at stabbing people with spears. After thoroughly beating yeah. the pants off the Persian Empire and becoming the most powerful man in history at the age of 26, Alexander saw absolutely zero reasons to stop. So he kept on pushing east and east and east and founded over 20 different cities named Alexandria across the former Persian Empire. Part of me thinks that this is just empty vanity, but the other part of me that's a complete slave to aesthetics recognizes that this is some A-tier branding. Eventually, Alexander the Alexander ran into the Indus Valley and thought, well, this will make a fine addition to my collection. So he fought the Battle of the Hydaspes River in 326 and won 
come on, this is Alexander the plot armor after all, what did you think was gonna happen? Yeah. If you're Alexander the Cool King, then this is great news. But if you're one of the 40,000 soldiers in his army, you might rightly be feeling a little worn out after five straight years of war. So when the Macedonians approached the Hephaestus River, his soldiers had enough, and I can see why. They'd basically journeyed 3,000 miles off the end of all of their maps, so they told Alexander, like hell are we gonna cross that river? We'll fall off. Excuse me? Fall off what? Did we stutter? Alex? The world! If we cross that river, we will fall off the world! So, Alexander, the not yet aware of how globes work, read the room and called off the campaign. Marking okay, I don't know how true that bit is there, um, because they could see the land across the river. So, you know. Mm. The first and the last time that he ever showed as much as an ounce of restraint in his entire life. And then he died of alcohol poisoning a year later. Number two. This next story is a tale as old as imperialism, where the names are made Ooh. up and the cultural significance doesn't matter. So, Greece, right? Smart old guys with beards, lots of pretty islands, endless stereotypes about national debt. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's Greece, you get it. But if you ask someone from there what their country's called, they'll say Hellas, named after Helen, since the Trojan War was the first time that Greece really acted as a semi-unified thing. Now you may be wondering, how did we get from Hellas to Greece? Those two words are as far apart from each other as possible. Blue, you sociopath. Every single letter is different except for E. Well, I'm getting there. E. And to solve this great linguistic conundrum, we gotta bust out some maps. So. There's this super ancient city here called Graia, right? Cool. And in the 8th century BC, they founded the colony of Cumae on the west coast of Italy. Some 500 years later, the Roman Republic started sauntering their way down the coast and ran into these people who spoke a different language, had very strong opinions about philosophy, and worshipped a unique pantheon of gods. The Romans saw these people in Cumae and said, neat. So they marked them down as originally coming from Graia, dabbled in some divine IP theft to beef up their own pantheon, and moved right along. As they went south, they ran into even more cities where the people spoke this same weird language, dished about platonic allegories for enlightenment, and worshipped the same lovable disasters we call the Olympians. Immediately, those big brain Romans knew what was up, for this, clearly, was another colony from Graia. Cumae? Graia. Thurii? Graia. Syracuse? Graia. This entire landmass to the east full of unique and independent city-states? What do you know? It's gotta be Graia! Now, contrary to Roman assertions, every Hellenic city in the world was not, in fact, a colony from Graia. But whenever a city tried to politely tell the Romans that they were originally from, say, Athens or Corinth instead, the Romans said, <laughs> Sounds we're, big, we're, sure. we're sure you're actually from Graia. Eventually, even the Romans figured out that maybe all of these people weren't the same. My narrow approach to cultural anthropology has been called out. How do I rectify this mistake? But Rome didn't have a habit of admitting their mistakes, and they weren't about to start now. So they compromised and said, Okay, fine. Mm. Maybe you're not all colonies from Graia, but you're close enough, so we'll add a letter and call you Graiki. Awesome. Problem solved. And that, dear viewers, is why Hellas is called Greece. Imperialism in a nutshell. Number one. We talk a lot on this channel about conflict and wars and junk like that because spectacles and drama put butts in seats, but in some rare cases, yeah. no humans were harmed in the making of this history meme. So now we turn to the tiny European principality of Liechtenstein. Little Liechtenstein was originally oh, one of about 80 billion microstates within the Holy Roman Empire, but managed to tuck and roll through Napoleon's pan-European Zerg rush and became an independent state in 1806. In the decades after, it was part of the German Confederation, which was dominated by Prussia and weirdly included half of Austria. Even though Prussia and Austria were rivals, it it's less confusing than the HRE, I'll give it that, but... Oh man, only just. So in 1866, yeah. a war broke out between the two and Liechtenstein took the opportunity to declare independence from the Confederation and total neutrality. The extremely modest 80-man army took up their post guarding an alpine pass along the border between themselves and Austria and proceeded to see exactly zero combat encounters because their only threat was Austria who did not care enough to even consider invading them. So the army stood guard over a stunning view of the Alps for a quiet month and a half and this is starting to sound 
less like a military deployment and more like summer camp. But just when it seemed Vacation? like this story couldn't the possibly swords? get any more Switzerlandy than it already Guns. was for our 80 Liechtensteiner pals, they returned home with 81 men because they made a friend. Oh, this is so wholesome. Apparently, an Italian guy ran into the soldiers while they were out in the mountains and joined them on their way back because he wanted to come live in Liechtenstein. So, with <laughs> one new best friend and a meme for the ages, Liechtenstein said, Alrighty, I think we're done here, and fully disbanded the army, proceeding to out Switzerland even the Swiss through both world wars. Well played, Liechtenstein. Well played. So, what have we learned here today? Well, I'd Nothing say it's really. that, one, Dante can never catch a break, Two, flat earthers will ruin all of your plans to conquer India. And I don't Three, the Greece is a lie. One. And four, the real history meme is, quite literally, the friends we made along the way. Thank you so much for watching. And that was Blue's Dumb History Tales number two. Please, uh, someone comment and tell me more about the whole, uh, um, the, the Alexander the Great one. Whether or not it was actually the soldiers afraid to fall off the end of the world. I don't believe that. I don't think that's the true, the truth. Cause like, all you have to do is look across the river and you would see land. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't believe it. <laughs> I think he turned around for other reasons. Um, but sure. Um, this video was okay. I don't think it was as good as his first dumb history tales. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was okay. Um, he's done better. Um, but yeah, I've got nothing else to add here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.